And you can always join us with your thoughts and comments. We are happy to read them uh, to the rest of the world. The Daily Graphic starts us off. says, criticism of free SHS initiative. Results will prove policy right. President expresses confidence. DVLA bags 226,000 Ghana cities from um, uh, the fake DV plate use uh, fines. Missing girls, families can witness DNA test. Acton IGP James of Wombuenu is uh, assured. Daily Guide, Nana Jabs Mahama, where are the projects? He's quizzing. And uh, IGP storms Takradi over missing girls. Ministry creates 4,750 uh, jobs and 1.5 million for Fuasi victims. The Inquisitor, arrogance of power, presidency shaking. Adenta NDC vows to resist strangers as parliamentary candidate. And uh, Professor Kakari highlights frightening incidents under Kufuado's government in relation to press freedom. The Herald, Professor Kakari unhappy with press freedom under Kufuado. Energy minister and deputy caged over PDS scandal. GRE boards to drag auctioneers before parliament. And angry Pokwasi residents demand better roads from government. The informer, as media freedom takes nosedive, Varsity Dawn disappointed in a Kufuado urges him to speak up and demonstrate commitment to free expression. Renaming of public universities after our forebears. Go to hell, MPP insults Ghanaians. Apologize for ridiculing my American accent and battle GMA president uh, boss demands of Imani president and Zoom lion fires malaria. The Daily Statement. Napo, it's right to spend oil money on education. Free SHS is here to stay. Akufado calls NDC's bluff. Power fraud confirmed. PDS threatens lawsuit against Danwell. Joe Australia are cut in insurance fiasco. And the final newspaper, 4,750 jobs created. 100 million Ghana cities spent on funding businesses and capacity building, according to Dr. Mohamed Awa, Minister for Business Development. NDC's comeback dream will be rejected by Ghanaians. That's President Akufuado speaking. And GRA launches mobile app to check fake tax stamp. Upper East residents endorse cylinder recirculation model and Boku Road to be completed before 2020 elections. That's the president promising one more time. The Ghanaian Times, big boost for cocoa sector as World Bank invests $300 million in industry. IGP visits families of kidnapped girls in Takradi and government creates 120,000 jobs in five years, Dr. Awal. Uh, government releases 1.491 million for Fuasi shooting victims. My guest this morning, Dr. Bernard Okoboy. He is a member of parliament for the Lejikuku constituency. Also, Madame Rodling Imorayana is a very uh, big woman within the Convention People's Party. And the Honorable uh, Alassane Suhini is the MP for Tamale North. Gentlemen, uh, lady, welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much. How's the Wednesday going, Dr. Okoboy? Ah, <coughs> so far, so good. My uh, we are doing well. You are doing well. Yes, okay. Ma Madam, <laughs> how are you, please? I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, we're all doing well. <laughs> Had a cold day. I see. Alasa. I'm terrific. I'm you're alive. I hope you are well, too. I'm alive and well. I'm greater than Accra. Doc, let, let's start with you. The Auditor General is asking you to retrieve monies uh, that have been wrongly paid out by some accounts officers at Kolebu. And I'm asking you this because you're board chairman of yeah. Kolebu. What's the way forward? He says, retrieve the money for us because they were wrongfully paid. Yeah. When are we seeing our money back? Yeah, so let me first of all say a very good morning to all your viewers, especially to my brothers and sisters uh, watching from the Lejoku constituency. <coughs> And also, let me say a wonderful one to all uh, residents of Fetinta. Have you heard of Fetinta before? Mm, no. Uh -huh. mm. it's, a, it's a community uh, on the highway between Sunyani and Drobo. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, I was there over the weekend. The chairman of the health committee, mm. Dr. Chum Nyama, okay. um, lost his father-in-law. Uh. and went there to support him. And I was amazed. The name, you know, the name is a very nice <laughs> name. Uh, it was the first time. And... It's good sometimes to go outside and then see the countryside. Okay. So a good morning to all the residents there, and we thank them for the support. 
Um, my brother, you know, I am always for value for money, you know. And I also believe strongly that the opportunity cost for corruption is huge. You know, people always talk about corruption. They forget to talk about the opportunity cost. Sorry. Now, okay. this is what it means. If anybody, through deliberate action mm. or negligence, makes the state lose, let's say, a million Ghana cities at Kolebo, mm. the opportunity cost is that that one million could have provided two or three diagnostic machines mm. which someone could have access to. So there's always an, op an opportunity cost mm -hmm. for inefficiency. And um, it's not about persons or individuals. Mm -hmm. I, am, I have no malice. I went to Kolebu with a first agenda to make sure the place is properly structured. Okay. And uh, I think we've done quite a lot within this short time. We've done restructure at the top. We had to go through, I mean, with our directors, went through a competitive process. Um, um, that aside, we've also made sure that the corporate governance structure is proper. You know, I always tell people that um, 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 when you put the structures in place, the human interface becomes less. We, we had some auditing done. I believe that's what they've reported. We've had two audit, the routine auditing, which um, they do every year, mm. uh, that goes to the Public Accounts Committee, right. apparently captured some, um, 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 what's the word, some um, deeds that ought to it be. It says disbursements made yeah. as expenditure without supported uh, payment uh, pay, voucher. Pay voucher. Yeah, exactly. 347,000 yeah, yeah, and 14 yeah. and, and, and all is in order. The Public Financial Management Act, when you read the um, Financial Regula Regulations mm. Act, all these public laws, actually stipulate um, how you, ha you handle such. And one of them, one of the, the, the ways to um, resolve such issues is to make sure that people are surcharged. Mm. So, um, right, we are for it. I mean, they should, um, if, if they've been asked to pay, or they should find ways You're to make sure You're back calling me bright. Uh, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> 20, 20, 20, 20. My name is Johnny, I beg you. Yeah. Mm. Johnny. My mother will not be happy with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I'm, I'm, I'm really <laughs> sorry, Johnny. Uh, so, so, I mean, it's in order. You know, some of these things, the greater good we get from them, it sends a signal to those who are in office now mm. and those who come after them that you can decide to do what you like now. But the day well, of what, what was the role come. of the internal auditors? Because yeah, they're supposed yeah. to be auditors in-house. For example... Yeah. A certain uh, Clifford is supposed to have been giving some money, some 54000 yeah. and, and over, yeah. for school fees yeah. to go and improve himself for a diploma course and come back and help. Yeah. And there were no documents to support yeah. that amount. You know, one thing I, I, I realized when I went to Kolebu as board chairman is that uh, the controls, internal controls were very weak. Mm. In fact, most things were done without proper documentation or being the public laws and all that. What we've done is to allow the auditor to go into some of these issues and make sure that recommendations are made as to how to deal with those that have been committed already. Kolebu, it's a very, I always say it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated place. You don't want a situation where you personally as the board chairman will be the one directly involved in the process to identify wrong and punish before someone raises the issue of maybe bias or prejudice. But state institutions are acting, and that's what I'm happy about. And we've even had a special audit also done. Mm. A lot of uh, 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 issues have been uncovered. And the refreshing thing is that we've been given recommendations on how to strengthen mm. the controls. Mm. So, um, Johnny, I, I think it, it's, it's a good sign that uh, institutions are being made, uh, uh, are being asked to be accountable. Accountability is good. It helps to um, reform people's behavior and to um, how do you call it? Uh, alert them that you operate within laws. Yeah, mm. that's that's very important. Great, madam. Take a bite on this. Uh, this is what we have been told, and it will not be the first of institutions that have had officers who are supposed to be protecting the national kitty spend money without properly accounting for for saying, and then we come back to say, oh, we don't have money. Let's go and borrow. This could have been money internally generated that could have been used for better purpose. Don't you think? Yes, um, good morning to our viewers. I think that um, corruption, as um, my colleague said, is the one thing that is really draining this country. And somehow we don't seem to have the means um, to fight it because of so many other considerations. Mm. But the issue at Kolebu, for instance, I think that he's dealt with it quite well because somehow it looks like Kolebu is always in the news for mm. the, the, the wrong reasons. Mm. 
And one would want to ask why. I mean, in a medical institution such as that, um, you expect that since they're supposed to be very, very um, critic of whatever mm. is there, mm. they will also use the same ploy for their accounting systems. Mm. Um, um, at the moment, um, one can say that the Auditor General is coming out with a lot of um, issues, mm -hmm. but as to whether we are really dealing with it, mm -hmm. um, I'm yet to hear that anyone has been held before the courts to be dealt with, mm -hmm. prosecuted. Mm -hmm. All we hear is um, we have uncovered this rot mm -hmm. in this institution. He's asking for a refund. Well, is, is that, is that the, the only issue? Should, should it just be refund? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we prosecute? You see, every time we keep saying that refund, refund, we, we keep saying people are going to refund monies. And then I ask myself, how about those other smaller things right. that people do and we jail them? Mm -hmm. Is it that the big ones don't, don't, don't go to jail? They always refund. And then that person who probably just does a little bit of something, mm -hmm. that person goes to jail. I don't think so. I don't think they should benefit from corruption. Um, refund with interest, yes. But will it also stop people from doing the same thing again? If Do it only Do meant... Doc says they have put in measures to ensure that... Uh, people don't repeat that. But those measures have been there for a very long time. It seems that people, the crooks are, <coughs> you know... No, no, they, when we went to call it, but honestly, uh, like I said, most of the controls were virtually non-existent. So I don't want to start, but we've made sure, within this short time, we've put a lot of committees that should have been... Look, there was no functional... Is it because you are there or because the system has become optimally functional now? No, so no, that no, even I, when you are not there yeah, as board chairman, exactly, exactly, the system will exactly. function. What we've put in place are structures that should have been there to, um, to obey the public laws, like the, um, a functioning audit committee. You know, you didn't have a functioning audit committee. Okay. We've put a functioning audit committee. And that makes... That enables you to have a committee that can do an objective work when it comes to controls. Okay. Unlike where just an internal auditor, mm. one person, mm. acts as an institution. More or less, that, that was what was happening. You had an internal auditor who was more or less the audit committee. Mm. And that one is dangerous because one person, based on some, depending on how things go, mm. can, you know, so, so yeah. Well, I think that's I what think. we have in most institutions, internal right. auditors. Mm. So, from what you're saying, then the internal auditor is supposed to be part of the internal the audit committee. I know, yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's where we always have the problems yeah. because somehow they connive with whoever and yeah. then at the end of it, we don't get the right thing. So maybe now we have to look at all institutions okay. if we really want to fight the corruption. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for <clears throat> most health centers and in fact, most institutions have these kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. But asking, my problem is, why should we just ask them to mm -hmm. refund? We, they should be prosecuted. We, we shouldn't encourage people to always think that I can steal it or I can do it and then at the end of the day, all I have to do is refund. It shouldn't be that. We should prosecute people. Okay. So, Hini, well, Johnny, they, um, they go and sin no more. It's, it's sin here again. <laughs> well, um, let me say good morning to my colleagues and good morning to our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North uh, constituency. I think that um, if you permit me, there is uh, an observation that I made while okay. in the constituency campaigning mm. that mm. I would want to put across, okay. especially mm. for the attention of government. Um, all is not well in Nantong. All is not well in Nantong. What's wrong there? Um, there are some uh, chieftaincy disagreements, mm. Mm. and the tension is simmering. And I think that um, it is in the interest of all of us, and especially government, okay. who I am sure is well briefed on the matters, mm. to act, you know, fast, to do what is needful, okay. before, you know, we have unfortunate, you know, scenes on our hands. Mm. Uh, I don't think that we are ready for any loss mm. of lives and destruction of property, right. which is likely to happen mm. if government does not intervene and do so you know, in a manner that will engender confidence. Must be really serious. From, yes, yes. I think that, I think the, the, the government must sit up. Some of us <coughs> will hold the government responsible if they sit and allow things to deteriorate to a point where we will have needless loss of lives and destruction of property. Great. So it is just something that I thought I must raise Good for call. the attention of Good government. Call. Now, um, with Kolebu, I think that... Um, I've covered Kolebu a number of times mm -hmm. when I was uh, in the media. Mm -hmm. And the stories just remain the same. They never change. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have uh, hosted a number of board 
chairpersons and CEOs, and they have all you know uh, boasted like my brother has done here mm. before mm. about how you know measures have been put in place and things have started improving and measures were not those measures were not there and that before is why yeah before he mm. came i've i've heard it a, a countless number of times and so it does not inspire me when i hear unfortunately i i have a lot of confidence in my brother but <laughs> it does not inspire me when i hear him repeat all those things that i've had other board chairpersons and ceos uh, you know say mm. after they, they they assumed the leadership of kolebu i think kolebu is a problem and maybe it is not just kolebu it is it is our public and civil uh, uh, sector in general okay. the politicians over the years uh, have you know uh, been spotlighted and you know sometimes you know uh, 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 a lot of accountability is demanded uh, of them but to some extent there are some other institutions that you know sometimes the politicians who go there are not really the problem right you know it may not be all institutions but some particular institutions as a journalist who have covered you know developments in those institutions i have come to uh, uh, perhaps ask myself if the politicians who are sent there every now and then are the problem or the workers at that institution uh, perhaps also need to be uh, taking a second look a, at a cartel a cabal what do you see exactly I recall uh, a former board chairperson, Mr. Eddie Annan, mm -hmm. uh, after he resigned, uh, he was harassed and, you know, all the demonstrations. And later okay. when he resigned, he made the point that there was a mafia at Kolebu. And Johnny, guess what? This same gentleman who is in the news today has been almost at the forefront of almost all the agitations against appointees at Kolebu. Is I'm talking about Oblite? James Oblite. Wow. He has been almost at all the, you know, he has led almost all the demonstrations in the past against, you know, CEOs mm. and against board chairpersons. And what, so for what, me... What would be his motivation? I mean, I, what I, runs through? For me, what, what runs through has always been the case of, uh, you know, uh, malfeasance and boards paying themselves allowances they shouldn't be paying and, you know, money is going to people that should contracts going. Those, has, those have always been his issue. So I find it quite intriguing that we are told in this story that according to the Auditor General's report, mm. he had an admission to go study abroad. Right. And though he did not get a visa mm. to, you know, go for the training, mm. he was paid 54,000 Ghana cities plus, mm. which he has not returned. For, so for a gentleman who over the years have been leading all these charges against all these appointees, to be found culpable per the Auditor General's report in this manner, mm. I think it's shameful. I think it's embarrassing. If, if indeed, if indeed the facts as reported is, is really you know what mm. happened i think that this, this is the auditor general yes, i think i think 347000 yes, i think that i uh, think that that also strengthens the point that i make that sometimes we may have to find out the motives mm. of these people in these institutions who often lead these agitations mm. against maybe political the, appointees interest. because it is not always the case it can't be that mm. all the time you know, the political appointees who go to these institutions are the problem. Mm. I have studied Kolebu and I've seen other, you know, uh, uh, audit, auditor, mm. you know, audited accounts okay. and reports yeah. mm. from that institution. And it, it is smelly, it is stinky, and it is not always how, the, how do the we appointed solve it? people. How, how, do we, how do we solve it? That's the, Johnny, that's the focus. The now. solution, let me. Let me ask you, you see, yeah. did you face a similar opposition? You see, did you face a similar opposition yeah, 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 when yeah. you went to You see, first of all, I've not heard about his yet. You see, <laughs> since I went to Kolibu, the, the things you hear, like the quality of decisions, like mm. allocating mm. allowances to last year, okay. during Christmas, for the first time, not even one city was paid to any board member for allowances. Why would I touch a hospital's man for allowances? We don't need allowance for Christmas. Apart from sitting, the normal sitting allowances. Not one gun. Previously in 2017, board members took, I think about 17,000 or so. Wow. Yes, they've been asked to refund. For it. Christmas? Yes, allowances. You know, so, look, wow. since I got there, we've made sure that the structures work. 
The director of medical affairs, who is the second most important person after the CEO, he had been there for over 12 years. Mm. Within six months, when I got to Kolebu, he's no more at the place. He's been replaced. Right. Not, Why not, did you not, replace him? We went through a competitive process. Published it in the dailies. I did an audit of all the appointments. I realized that most of them, the one who signed did not have the authority. Okay. Tenor was valid. PDS. But authority was questionable. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I told them, listen, the director of finance in Kolebu had been there for about three or four years since I came. He took me to the high court. Nobody heard of this. I okay. was quiet. The court threw him out. As I speak, he's on interdiction. These are the recommendations, which he has accepted. He appeared before a committee set up by the board. One, he's been interdicted. He's been demoted and released to the ministry to go and study under a more competent person. These he, are documents I he, have. He wasn't competent? He, no, no, no. And he was administering yes, such yes, funds? Yes, 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 in Kolebu. Look, like many checks were signed without pay vouchers. All this, I'll do one year in Kolebu, mm -hmm. meet the press, and let you know what's happening. Okay. But as I speak, the director of finance in Kolebu is on interdiction. Wow. He appeared before a committee. He himself admitted the findings, virtually pleaded for leniency. These were the things that came out. One, released to the ministry after six months of suspension okay. without salary, demoted, and then he's supposed to pay some monies which they found out that mm. were paid. The, guy. Mm. the director of administration, the same thing, is on interdiction as I speak. Wow. You know, Johnny, I, I'm coming. I'm I, coming. I, 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 I was. Yeah, to, I, I was, yeah, I, I'm, I'm coming. happy with let, it. No, no, let, you let, let, me let, let me give us. See, let me give us look, to These were people that I thought. Uh, medical affairs had been there for close to 12 years and the talk in Kolebu is that if this gentleman can go in a seamless quiet manner anybody can go and i didn't do it on a personal stuff mm. i used structures looked at your documents looked at performance they went for interviews at public service commission there are things i'll just mention one okay. one particular position nobody in Kolebu applied you know why yeah. they believe that any board that comes have their own people mm. I had to see senior consultants to talk to people to virtually apply. They didn't even bother. Which position is that? I will not mention. But just to tell no, you, 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 how do we follow you? Just lead. to tell you the apathy in the system. Mm. And then, look, Johnny, as we speak for the first time, there was something that was so significant in Kolebu. It was a structural problem, which many who have come and gone said is the issue of contention. Okay. In Kolebu, most of the heads of departments, like let's say obstetrics, surgery those are from the mm. hospital mm. the appointment comes from medical school okay the university mm. so you have an institution with the management and the board and the heads that run the institution have the authority coming from university of ghana for the first time as i speak now kolebu's heads are being appointed by what the management and the board and in fact it is refreshing to say that mm. as board chairman for the first time in over 40 or 50 okay. years i have signed the appointment letters for heads of what the department mm. this is the only way through management i can make sure i supervise okay mm. in the past you have a ceo or a director of medical affairs who's supposed to be in charge of the departments really it is only in name mm. because the one who is there and the appointment letter states clearly you are accountable to the dean of the medical school wow you know so this, you don't have control really but how can you have control when the one is supposed to supervise takes the authority from another source as we speak for the first time, that has been realigned. Okay. And please, there are a few things people used to tell whether Kolibu is functioning or dead. Mm -hmm. For the first time, the MRI of Kolibu teaching us, since I went there, is working. Mm -hmm. Nobody is driven out of Kolibu. The CT scan of Kolibu is working. Mm -hmm. And I'm in talks with another partner to have a second line. When I see a second line, apart from the one wholly owned by Kolibu, mm -hmm. there's going to be a PP arrangement so that you will not come in the night and the doctor tells you, drive to let your dental okay. to go and take a CT scan. Mm -hmm. You understand? These are very, very important matters. And Kolebu's problem was leadership. Mm. These people talk about Kabbalah and Mafia. I'll not put it. Was, yeah. was. I am interested in structures and competence. How, do, how yes. does the ordinary patient who walks into Kolebu benefit from these things Excellent. that you're now, now, I think you read a few posts. People are starting to say the things happening in Kolebu. Mm. It is now very... You will not go to a department and be told that we don't have gloves or... Uh, they, we've run out of regions or bros who cross the streets to go and do labs as we speak kolebu has an automotive lab now in partnership with a, a private person that runs thousands of labs within minutes no in fact if you see anybody walking across the street it ought to be investigated we are trying to make sure that the basic things a hospital delivers mm. like investigations in the lab like radiology look x-rays were broken down now all are back on stream and those in Colombia, you got to go there and talk to them mm. they will tell you that in terms of structures and governance faith in the leadership is going not significant and i'm happy to mention that procurement issues you know procurement issues Kolebu 
did not have a function. I use the word functioning entity tender committee. Okay. There was an entity on paper. Mm -hmm. But if you check, in the whole year, they meet, let's say, once or twice. Mm -hmm. This is an institution that does procurements in the billions. As we speak, we now have a functioning entity that meets regularly. Okay. There is no way you go for an item without it passing through a competitive process. Mm. And savings are being made. And that is why I'm telling you that this story you are, you are, you are reading, these were things that happened before the Dr. Kobo led board. Mm. And the things we put in place are not personal things. It will outlive us. Okay. Like the HODs, for example, let me end with that. Thank you. The opponent of HODs. I didn't go like, I'll do an interview as the board chairman mm. and mm. select. No. We put in place a committee, not names, but persons. Okay. HR chairman. Uh, chairman of the HR Committee of the Board, the Director of Medical Affairs, the CEO, the Dean of the Medical School. Exactly. So, they just do their work, they give me the report, the recommendation, we sign. And for the first time, people tell you, we now feel that we have a, an institution that is open. Do you know why you've not heard of COSA for a long time? Mm. Before I went to COSA, I called the Senior Staff mm. Association. Mm. Taking on the, because now I engage everybody, whether okay. official or unofficial, all bodies, Kolibu mm. Bu Doctors Association, COSA, Welfare, Every decision I engage these people okay. tell you the motive. So, my brother, unfortunately, good news doesn't sell. Mm. That's why with the MRI working, the cities can't work. But, but the MRI was broken for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and, and we and we were told also that the people who from whom the MRI was bought were sidelined when we wanted to repair the MRI. Now it's Correct. not only functioning; it also has a, a maintenance schedule. Okay, they are on site all the time. Mm. So, so 24 hours. So, okay. Let me, let me just you know, ask Doc, this if, if I could finish. <laughs> yes, but yes, madam. I just want to ask him mm. just yeah, a quick I thought one. I was still on you the know. floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But this one, because he's here and his colleague. Yeah, I understand. I just want to find out what he's doing about the, the fact that some doctors in Kolebu who have private clinics yeah. do not give up their best when we as patients go it's there. It's excellent. So the director of medical affairs mm. is supposed to be responsible for ultimate clinical output. How a doctor behaves, whether they work within schedule. And guess what? I spoke about an arrangement that has existed in Colombia before I was born, which is that you have a director of medical affairs mm. who's supposed to be in charge of heads, whose authority comes from another institution. That has been what changed. We've done the proper thing now. So now I have taxed him to make sure that the kind of complaints we get from the units are what minimized. Right. And I'm happy to mention that he is one of their own. This is a mm. consultant who was teaching in medical school. He's no stranger. And so, over years, once it's a practice that has existed for decades, okay. once you change it, it will take some time okay. for the, the Thank impact you. to be very filled. much. So, Ili, wrap, wrap up for me. You, you, he, he, you know, dog, dog. You know, his, his station is on my property, <laughs> Kolebu. <laughs> <laughs> we gave it to them. That's why he knows a lot about yeah. Kolebu. The, the, the station that you have shut down. Yeah. Your okay. government has it's, shut it's down. All right. yeah, we'll call NCA we'll 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 next time. <laughs> so, Ili, let's talk about Kolebu. You can add that to the achievement of that. Anyway, but you see, Johnny, forgive my pessimism. Mm. I mean, I'm not excited. I should have been. But sincerely speaking, I'm not excited about all the talk. That Be because of history? Because, because, you see, like I told you, I've heard it all. I've heard it all before. But when I've, the machines are working... Please, uh, allow, 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 please. You have, fact, you have, you have, had, fact, you have had a so lot of time. The machines have been told on my show those days... Mm -hmm how they were not working, how they have come back, the lifts, how they were not working, how they have come back, mm -hmm. you know, how the, the, some institutions were making losses, how they are now making profits. I've heard it all. So, I, I, but unfortunately, the problem remains. And mm -hmm. today, Johnny, I've, I was just looking for some messages that yeah, I, I think that I might have changed the phone. Mm -hmm. Just about, I think, a month or so ago, I got complaints mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, some units, uh, uh, oxygen, and this lab thing mm -hmm. that you are talking about, about how a private person is now there, mm -hmm. and the, the, the hospital lab, the hospital doesn't really... I was just trying to get, you know, the mm -hmm. details of what mm -hmm. I was saying, but I think that is not on this phone. Right. So I'm saying that, right, I mean, sorry, Johnny. When you go out there, you find a different picture okay. on the ground. Mm. I hope that what my brother is doing yields the necessary, you know, results. Mm. But I am saying that for me, at this stage, I'm holding my breath. Well, he needs support. I'm holding. Mean? Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Mm. Because, you see, as if indeed he is introducing these reforms that he is leading, mm. what has happened in the past and you know has led to mm. the disruptions in the past is that everyone starts with these reforms mm. but
line, the COSA that he's talking about, in the past I've heard all the board chairmen and CEOs talk about how they are engaging them, how they are engaging them. But one misstep or one, you know, uh, 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 selfish motive that is, in my view, mm -hmm. not satisfied, then the unions, the mafias, they are up in arms. And then so they call for changes. Okay. So what I am, what I am hoping what, what for recommend? is that, mm. look, let us all, you know, uh, uh, monitor what is going on in Kolebu. Mm -hmm. And if the reforms that my brother is talking about are really yielding the results that we all expect, mm -hmm. then we must all including government and those of us who patronize that hospital, you know, look to how we can protect the people who are leading the reforms when the agitations, as usual, mm. start. Because, like, for me, I've come to a, a point where when workers of some institutions, not all institutions, some institutions begin agitating against leadership, okay. I am cautious about which side to take. Okay. Because people usually do not, you know, find change comfortable. Mm. And so the agitation sometimes may be as a result of the urge by the new leadership to do something different okay. so that you can get better results. Mm. But sometimes, yes, some of the appointees also go there and misbehave and misconduct themselves. Right. There's no doubt about that. But I think that let us monitor what is going on. Mm. If we are seeing improvements that, you know, need to be uh, supported, if the agitation start, uh, you can have our Johnny, support. But uh, if okay. we are not seeing improvement, Johnny, if the agitation uh, yeah, start, let, let we'll join the agitation. I just want to no, no, correct. We need to change no, no, just, it. We need just to change a second. direction. No, no, just a second. Yeah. Some of the um, allowance that I talked about in mm. 2017 right. went to the executive members, okay. not the non-executive. Right. The appointees okay. didn't take okay. to the executive members. And then let me say that uh, Suhini, and I appreciate his position because mm. of the years of you know the same thing. Mm. But let me say that these happenings which have been reported, mm. which makes him say that occurred before we came in. Okay. And maybe I would encourage him to let someone go there, talk to people, so that we get the recent impression the of The new feeling. picture. Exactly. Okay, grateful. Thank you very much. So, Kolebu is out of the way. Let's now, uh, two years down the line, after the seven banks were collapsed and uh, put together, what we call it the Consolidated Bank Ghana. What has the Governor of Bank of Ghana been saying? Take a look at this. On. What will be your general overview of this cleanup exercise? No, I think that we've ended, you know, the two years with a more solid banking sector. These are banks that are well capitalized, they are more liquid, they are more profitable. I think the governance of the banks have also been strengthened. And all of this is with a view to improving stability of the system. And, and, and thereby, you know, allow the banks to be more effective. You know, banks are there to provide credit to support growth. If you have weak banks or banks that are not liquid, that intermediary, intermediation function is, is not, you know, properly effected. So we think that our banks are in a better position mm. to provide the necessary credit to full growth. What would you say was your biggest challenge as governor taking on this exercise. We were told that, I mean, from a few of the comments you've made here and there, that the, the banking system was in a mess when you took over as governor. I mean, How imagine walking in uh, the very first week I walked into this office. I had a debriefing from the International Monetary Fund uh, telling me that, well, you have inherited some good things and some not too good things. Among the not too good things were nine banks which were significantly undercapitalized and needed recapitalization. Mm. Among the nine banks were two banks that were insolvent and we think that the licenses of these two banks have to go. This was in April 2017. We did our best uh, between April and July to August before we took the decision to take out the licenses of UT and Capital Bank. Between that time, we spent a lot of time discussing with the shareholders, recapitalization plans for those two banks. Mm. It became very clear after the due diligence that the situation with the banks were so bad, the, the level of insolvency was so bad that you could not 
get any investors that were interested in putting any more money into those two banks. Welcome back. That's, that's the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Adesik Dare, speaking. Well, a conversation with him, uh, Ethanam Say, conducted that interview. And he mentioned particularly that by the close of the year, we're going to see some prosecutions because that is uh, being a major thing. People have lost their jobs. Uh, people aren't able to assess their funds uh, in some cases. But nobody as yet has been prosecuted for wrongdoing. And the governor says by the close of the year. My panelists will have a take on that. But first, Aisha is here with a few messages. Uh, Aisha, welcome back. Hi, Joey. Hi, How Joey. are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I live and well. Um, so we have a few messages. Let's just quickly go through them and then we wrap up. Mm. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, this one says, uh, good morning, TV3. It is not true nothing has happened in Nantong. Honorable Suhini uh, is doing politics. NDC has started again. This time, no more chieftain seat politics. Adam from Tamali Tishegu sent that one. This one says, good morning, TV3. Keep on doing the great work. NPP think they are smart. The tardy kidnapped girls are not dead. They just want to divert attention from the big scandal that hit them with this PDS thing, but they failed. Ghana is doomed this if we so don't vote this family and friends government out 2020. This is coming from Usman in Tamale. Uh, this one says, uh, please, uh, Johnny, help voice what Honorable Suhini raised about Nantong to the hearing of Mr. President. E.D. sent that one from Savilugu. Um, uh, this one also is coming from Emilia from Asawasi. She says, this administration and pride. Hmm. So can this government be truthful for once? Are they saying Ghanaians are uh, blind? We're blind in voting voting for them. Our president should stop the unaware, the super incompetent comments because Ghanaians are wise. Greetings uh, to all social Democrats. Amelia sent that one from Asawasi. This one says, good morning, Johnny. The NPP man is just um, throwing dust into our eyes by blaming the previous government. This is really incompetent on their part. They are only talkatives. Uh, Abdallah sent that one from Bojia. This one says, the rotten looting under this government is unprecedented. I'm weeping for my beloved Ghana. KK Max sent that one from Tongo. And this one says kudos to Dr. Okohi's uh, one politician I really admire, although I'm not uh, his party member. I wish we can have more politicians like him. He didn't add uh, his name. Good morning, Johnny. The NPP has nothing to offer Ghanaians again. They have totally failed. Ghanaians are just waiting for 2020 to show them the exit door. And inshallah, it will happen very soon. Ismaila Horo. Roya Ali sent that one uh, to us. And Johnny, those are some of the messages that you've <laughs> Thank you very much, Aisha. Just keep keep them coming in. Uh, we'll send uh, a few more messages. Uh, Doc, somebody just sent a, a message to uh, Alas and Suini's phone. And yeah. he says that you should tell them the labs you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> I mean, let me just read it. Says, okay, I, am, so. I am on admission watching you. Ask Dr. Okoboy which lab he's referring yeah. to. We all go across the street to Lancet Laboratory. Yeah. I am in Kolebo on yeah. admission now. You know, Johnny, the, the answer to that is very simple. Mm. Almost 90% of the labs that used to go out are being now offered by um, a laboratory service that we've gone into partnership with at the accident and emergency. Most of the units because it's been the practice over the years. We are virtually doing the education and the information, reminding them daily mm. to make sure that those labs come to us okay. as in the unit at the as in the emergency. So we do it. And they did benchmarking some few weeks ago. They did some they took some samples, did the test at um, how do you call it at um, Lancet mm. and then did it at this lab I'm talking about and looked at the values just to give the assurance to okay. the professors mm. and the doctors that this is and it came out clearly that in fact the results we had nearly went above the quality that comes from Lancet. Okay. But once someone is used to the change process, doing okay. something over here. So Sweeney, I think I'll, I'll mm. virtually um, talk to the directors okay. to make sure that the education Great. is aggressive. <coughs> yeah. Right. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, Sweeney, there are two messages. One said what you said about Nandon is correct. The other says it's a complete lie. Uh, you see, you see the, that's the problem that I think that some of us from the northern region uh, have had over the period. 
there is there's nothing political mm. about calling on government to do what it is expected to do to ensure that the security of the area is protected. Okay. There's nothing political about that. Mm. But you see, if you are consumed by partisanship mm. and you think that any call on government to do what it is expected to do mm. is an attack on that government, then you are rather being partisan. Because anybody who has the slightest you know, knowledge about chieftaincy in Dagbong mm. currently will tell you that Nantong is sitting on a time bomb. Okay. Nantong is sitting, and it is the discussion point that almost all the youth groups that you meet, you know, are currently having. And just last week or so, you know, one faction held a press conference, mm. even giving government ultimatum. And it is, it is published. Okay. So are you saying, and, and the regional minister is in charge of Rexec. So I'm saying that all the warning signs are on the wall. Mm. So government should move in quickly okay. before we have something that we will all not be proud about. What is political about this? Okay. What is partisan about Thank this? Thank you. Interior Minister, good morning to you. Uh, Mr. Ambrose Derry, uh, Defense Minister Dominic Tewo, good morning to you. Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, good morning to you as well. <laughs> uh, you. Vice President, you come from up north, good morning to you as well. So now I'll give and, him the uh, number. I, I so read, he calls him. No. I, I, so, I did read that <laughs> article from Nantong. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Press great. Conference. Yeah. Doc, Two years after the uh, collapse of the seven banks, Consolidated Bank Ghana, and uh, prosecutions are yet to happen. What say ye? I'll give you, you two know, minutes. You um, know, my brother, um, I am privileged to uh, be allowed to sit in the Finance Committee of Parliament. Okay. On most of the times that this guy, when they looked into some of these banks, their issues. If you look at the boldest report, and some of the report that came from an administrator that looked at Unibank, mm. let's put politics aside. People did things that were not good in terms of preserving or protecting the savings of Ghanaians. A lot of the rules were breached. And in fact, the banking, BSD, the Banking and Supervision mm -hmm. Department of Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. continuously issued reports that mentioned that things were being done in a way that would run the banks into a ditch. Okay. So at a point, we virtually asked the governor of the Bank of Ghana, the gentleman you had said, Doc, how come this department was giving all the warnings, the red signals, mm. and didn't apply the laws. All he told us is that he wished would focus on how to manage the problem and move forward. He eventually told us that these were technocrats who knew what to do, but he suspects that maybe they were powerful. It's a state institution, although they are supposed to be autonomous. Mm. You got what I mean? Mm. Remember, the governor of the Bank of Ghana is appointed by what? The executive. Mm. So although they are autonomous, what he wanted to tell us is that these same people today under me are working with me to correct what they should have done many years ago. So I'm and yet nobody has been held accountable. No, I'm, com I'm coming there. So we virtually told him what happened was that the head of the banking supervision department, as we speak, okay. has been realized. He's not the one in charge anymore. Is that is that what we no 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 is that what we, no hold reassigned. on so you are reassigning him oh, he failed to do his I'm job but you are reassigning wait, you him should, you should wait for what I'll say subsequently mm -hmm. we told him in the face that we are not pleased with this but this is what he said as a as a, a, an agency they have rules with which they work they are not a prosecuting agency okay. if there are rules within the public service that deals with an individual on criminal grounds mm -hmm. they are for it but what he can do as the head of the institution. That is readily available to him, his powers, is to make sure that such a person does not still manage such a delicate Did, did he make recommendation for prosecution? No, no, I'm coming there. Honestly, no, you don't have all the time. No, no, I have. No, oh, okay, okay, okay. You okay. don't have all the time, yeah. So, <laughs> no, so what happened was that there are three things they are trying to do. First of all, to put in place very strong controls to make sure that you don't wait for such, those things that happen to go to that red line for b before we come in. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is to build enough very strong evidence mm. to to be given to the AG mm. so that if they are doing prosecutions, they are not found wanting. Okay. And then the third thing he told us was that as an agency, once they've given the evidence to the Attorney General's Department, really, he's not the one to do the prosecutions. And I'm happy to mention that mm. I think because no one has gone to jail yet, we don't, <laughs> we are not seeing. There are people who have appeared before the courts. Madam. In his group, 
they went they were taken to court on these issues okay. and even sometimes they had to place injunctions mm -hmm. the court had to say no they don't have a case mm -hmm. so the some of them the case have started already okay yes Guess so, the governor says end yes. of year we're waiting yeah. for him madam take a bite on this one the yeah. governor says by the close of the year uh, people will be prosecuted and and then you will bring the finality to this matter what do you say well that's what i'm waiting to 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 hear and i'm waiting to see um because if you have technocrats bending the rules and making things difficult for everyone mm. i think it's about time we dealt with the issues yeah. and dealt with them as well um if if we go by the public services um, rules and regulations mm. if anyone should fault it i don't see why we should dilly dally with the issue or we give it the ca carrots That's instead it. of we, 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 with we, the you, stick. Have, you just have to you know crack the whip and this this is what is lacking in in various institutions that we are having problems with because somehow we always sweep everything under the carpet mm. and then we let the people go i think it's about time we crack the whip on all these things mm. technocrats who are working in the public service are supposed to be working for us we are, we expect them to do what we pay them to do mm -hmm. and not go and, and massage things and then create bigger problems for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy if he says that by the end of the year we'll be seeing some prosecutions okay. and we'll then get to know mm -hmm. exactly what has been happening in the financial institutions as well. And maybe, just maybe, that would bring some form of sanity mm -hmm. within the banking sector mm -hmm. and all the financial institutions because this, this whole thing has cost Ghanaians a lot. People okay. are sitting home without their monies, mm -hmm. you know, because of other people's... Uh, 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 you know, inaptitude to, to, towards their work. Mm. So I think that this thing is good. Let's prosecute. So uh, the, the uh, governor says they didn't rush into taking the decision, and if they hadn't taken the decision, yeah. we would have ended up worse. Yeah. And prosecutions will come, so we should sit tight and wait for it. Is that enough for you two years down the line? I agree with the governor that um, prosecutions need to uh, happen. Mm. Um, I think that uh, it has taken too long. Uh, prosecutions should have started immediately. Some of the measures that were announced, mm. you know, were taken. But I disagree with him when he says that it could have been worse. Mm. I think that it could have been better. Why, why do you disagree? You see, sometimes there is uh, an attempt to create the impression that the previous government did not do anything about this looming crisis. Mm. But what is not in denial is the fact that the audit that is used by this government mm. to carry out all the reforms, mm. or if you like, the collapsing mm. that they are engaged in, was instituted by the previous government. Mm. And so it didn't just institute that audit to put it on the shelves to gather dust. It did so because it's intended to take ac action mm. but you see doing the right thing the wrong way deserves no applause if reforms had to be done i believe and i have listened to experts that it could have still been done in a much you know um um a friendly manner mm. reforms does not mean collapse banks where, where people were using fraudulent documents no you see fraud people fraud, are being given money to recapitalize and use it fraud, for other functions johnny johnny fraud how is, nice could you we see have been? in reforming in reforming mm. you can isolate those fraudulent cases okay. and prosecute okay. that's what i'm saying that it does not necessarily mean that because fraud has happened at tv3 the best way to reform mm. is to collapse TV3. I'm right. saying that yeah. you can isolate whoever is fraudulent right. in the process and, and, and deal okay. with that person, mm. but still reform the institution to continue to p play its role mm. in the economy. And so that is, that is where I disagree with the governor, okay. that this was the only way we could have done it. I'm, I am aware, I Which am aware... There are so many other ways. You should show ways. us the way. You don't just say there are better the Nigerian ways. example. Johnny, the Nigerian example. The Nigerian and consolidation. The Nigerian Most of these banks, they've been consolidated. Please, they, they have been collapsed. collapsed. But people have yeah, lost their jobs. Collapsed. Yeah, but, oh, thousands, but thousands would have gone home. Thousands Please, would have gone home. That is not true. Thousands, which is the other thing like that. Thousands could have gone home. And by your watch, okay. they use the money Dr. to fund. Dr. Bernard Okobo is the MP for Lejo Kuku. And we are paying for this. Lejo Kuku Jay-Z. Madam Rodley Ibora Yana is also so, uh, a former vice chairperson of the CPP, and the Honorable Alassan Suhili is the MP for Tamale North. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, wait, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Channel it through me. Allow me. Allow me.
This, this is a very serious matter. We don't, we don't want violence.